Hey everyone, I'm Andrew and welcome to Tech Check. In today's video, we'll be looking at something that I picked up for my next PC build off of Facebook Marketplace for an awesome deal. This here is Lian Lee's O11 Dynamic ATX Mid Tower. So as I said, I picked this up off Facebook Marketplace. It is a used case. As you can see, box has already been opened, tapes cut. But when I went to pick it up and I looked at it, there was absolutely, there's no marks on the glass. There was like no marks on the paint. There was a little bit of two-sided tape that just came off easily. There was, I think, one or two scuffs. But once I build the system in it, you'll never even see them. For the deal I got, I just couldn't pass on this. After wanting it for so long, this, oh, I'm rambling. So how about we just get this case out of the box and take a look at it. All right, so I got it out of the box and I had to take off one of the glass panels as it was super reflective and I wouldn't get anything on camera. But before we get into the case, I wanted to show you one thing. This comes with a really nice foam and here it is right here that goes on the bottom and the top to keep it safe during travel, right? It has a nice little handle in it. However, the box doesn't have a handle in it. Come on, Lee Hanley, you put a handle in your foam, but you got no handle in the box. Oh well. Anyways, just, just my little rant for today. Let's get that put away. Back to the case. Now one thing that you will probably notice is I've already installed some fans here just to give you a little bit of scale, right? Now, I wanted to put in a vertical mount in this, and from what I've read, you cannot have three fans on the bottom with a vertical mount, so I've chosen just to do two intake on the bottom and three intake on the side, as well as I'll have a 360 AIO that I'll be putting on top. But enough about what I'll be doing, let's just go over this case. So as you can see, it is the white model with the clear tempered glass. I'll have to show you that in a second because I put it over the side. Down at the bottom here, there is room to put three 120 millimeter fans if that's what you want to do. I just, as I've read, you cannot have three with a vertical GPU mount. Down here at the bottom, as you can see, there's a little SSD sled that just comes out very easily with this one little thumb screw. I forgot, it's not captive. There's these four little grooves that these little metal slots just slide right into. You would screw your SSD into this. So that's pretty neat. There was actually two of these that came with it. One goes underneath where this fan would be, but I figured, you know, you don't need to see both of them, which you will once we go through the box, because that's where I left it, but see how easy that was to install? Anyways, that will take up one of your uh, 120 millimeter fan mounts though, if you do want to use it, or two if you chose to use two. Just warning you now. So that leaves the side intake fans, right? What we have over here is three 120 millimeter fans. This is also capable of holding a 360, 240, obviously 120 millimeter rads. So it has support for all of that. As you can see, these fans are actually on the other side because there's so much room on the other side. I'm not positive, but I think I could even put a rad and fans on the other side. Now at the bottom here, you can see I've already done some cable management. You have the USB 3, the front panel, power button, and HD audio and reset switch. As well as, oh, this is your HD audio here, so this would be your power and your LEDs and stuff like that. As well as this cable here that's just routed through for my fans. So these will all, it's always good to just pre-wire these before you put any motherboard or do any like building in this so you know where all your cables are going to go in advance. I'm not sure most cases nowadays do come with the standoffs pre-installed. As I said the previous owner of this case did have a build in it so he may have installed them himself. What I am noticing is that the center st standoff is actually different than most cases these days. Usually the center has a little nub on it to hold your motherboard in place, letting you know this is where, uh, you know, just when you're installing, make it a bit easier. But this is actually a full one that has to be screwed in, so you might want to be careful you don't scratch the bottom of your motherboard or anything when installing in a case like this. Obviously you have the IO shield area. I really like the black and white 
uh, mixed uh, rear covers. That's that's pretty neat. Usually it's either all black or all white, depending on the color of your case. Just notice too the standoffs actually being black. Not that you'd see that when there's a build in there, but. I'm just starting to ramble about this. I love this case so much. I've wanted it for so long. I just can't believe I actually have one. But I think that's about it for the inside. Oh, um, I forgot to talk about the cutouts. Look at all these cutouts. You have rubber grommets on pretty much most of them. You have bottom cutouts here for like your HD audio, like I said, and your USB 3, stuff like that. You have the top cutout with a huge grommet here, as well as above that for like, if you have radiators, or in fans up here for like cable management of that make it so it doesn't have to come all the way down here and hang maybe so you could actually see it it'll hide behind your fans then you have a little hold right here which could be for your EPS if you don't want to bring it through here but there's just so much cable management like routing ideas here I don't think you could make a bad system in this unless you like purposely tried to do that so looking at the back, starting at the top, there's those two captive thumb screws I had told you about. When you just unscrew both of these, not very tight, pull that back to release the top. And then once this is released, as you can see, there is the slots there. There is just underneath that, if I put this down, a little filter for exhaust or intake, whatever you have there. So keep the dust out. But once that's removed, then you have the ability to remove the front and side panels. So say you want to take one of the side panels off and just maybe get some better airflow or just if you're doing filming and it's too glary. You can pop one of them off, put this back on very easily, screw it back in and the other panels are still secure. As you can see just underneath that, you have this little cover right here. <clears throat> What's that covering? Well, if we take off this screw, we find two three and a half or two and a half inch drive bays. So you can mount some SSDs in there or some mechanical drives. That's pretty neat to have there. But another neat feature of this is if you pull these four screws out, not only can you mount a power supply down here, as that's what you would do here. So you can see there's little scuff. It is a used case. He did have one mounted in there before. Nothing that will be seen once I mount one in there. Anyways, back to this. If you remove these four screws, you can put in a second power supply in this case. If you're running like tons of graphic cards or something that needs so much power, overclocking, I don't know. Not something I would ever need, so these drive bays will come in real handy for me. Now I believe they're reversible. Let me just put this slot over here and show you. Just pull that right out like that. It's got little rubber grommets in it, so if you want to mount in your drive, you know, for vibration, stuff like that. But as you can see, I pulled it out this way. If we flip it over, shove it back in, and it locks right back into. So they are reversible, depending on how you want to mount your drives, maybe how they're connected in the back. It's great. You're not stuck in just putting them one way and having to twist a SATA connector or something. So, so that's nice. But I guess other than the... 8, which is one more than the usual 7 you get on a mid-tower, PCI slot covers for your expansion devices on your motherboard, and your little I.O. shield location. It's basically just the standard back of a case. Okay, so to remove this side panel, like I told you, you pull off the top panel by undoing the two captive thumb screws at the back, which then allows you to release the side and front panels. Well, front and side panels, I should say. And to do that, once the top's removed, just slide up and pull right off. Oh, as it's held on by little screw clips right here that attach to the chassis in these five locations, as well as two little slots on the bottom of the side panel that fit into the bottom to line everything up. Now, as you can tell, it's a little dusty. As I said, it's used, but that's all right. Still looks like great condition. You got both the filters, which I was really worried he might have lost the filter or something, but nope, everything was included. So let's just move this side panel for a second and take a look on this side of the interior. As you can see, 
I have the three 120 millimeter fans that I showed you earlier. They're mounted with still tons of room. So I think I could have fit a radiator and fans on that side, but I'm still choosing to go with the top exhaust radiator. Right here, you have your little cable hide cover, which is held in by two captive thumb screws right here, as well as one screw right there that's just released with very tiny screws. So be careful with that, but it's just a little star screw, Phillips screw. Then over here, of course, is a little riser that your power supply will sit on. And obviously come to about back here, all, but look at all this space. Give me a second, I'm going to take this off, and we're going to look at it more. Okay, so I quickly got a screwdriver. Let's get this little cover off. So to do that, as I said, be careful, this is a very tiny screw. Oh, and I almost dropped it, but I didn't drop it here. Let me show it to you guys. Look at how tiny that screw is. I don't even know if you can see that, but that is very tiny. And then you just undo these two thumb screws right here, which should release it. Oh, they're not captive. All right, so I dropped one. Totally forgot that. And this just slots in the bottom and releases. So let me get that captive thumb screw and we'll talk about this in a second. Okay, so I picked up the screw and now back to this little cable cover. As you can see, there's room on this with some grommets on the other side, I would say, that you can mount some hard drives down here, two and a half inch, up here either two and a half or three and a half inch. So as I said, you got this little drive cage here that we showed you earlier, or you can mount right on the back of this and then slide it right up there. Have your SATA going right through there for, you know, easy cable management. They have this little bar right here, which I'm currently using to wrap the cables over and down behind these included Velcro. I did ask, these were included, he didn't put them in there. Velcro straps. I've put my cables for the fans right down here. Just for some easy cable management, I'll probably get an extension and that'll go to a fan header. With all the grommets and holes for cable management, it'll be simple to make this PC look beautiful. You probably won't even see a wire once I'm done. Well, like you know, a stray wire. You'll see the ones I want you to see. But look at this room. I can fit my entire fist back here. So for those of you that have trouble with like maybe just a half inch, you'll be in love with a case like this. But I guess that's about it for the back side here, or I should say the right side of the case. So this front panel is just like all the other panels. Once you release the top, you just slide it up and it pops right out. It's connected with these one, two little slots right here, as well as the two at the bottom, just like on each of the other side panels. What these do is it lines it up sl to slide right down to make everything seamless. This case is seamless everywhere. This is like a luxury case. So as you can see over here on your front IO, you have the power button, which I believe has an LED around it or is lit up. Then you have your two USB 3.0, as well as your front HD audio, and then your USB 3.1 Type-C front panel, which I don't actually have a motherboard that'll take advantage of that connector, but it's nice to know that in the future, if I do get one, it's available to use. Now looking at the top, as I've already stated, you have the top panel that holds the other, all the other panels in. This panel needs to be removed before you can take off the sides or front, but you can also put it back in to secure panels you don't want to remove. So let's just move that to the side and take a look at what it reveals. What it reveals is around the edge of the chassis here, all the holes that it actually clips into to lock itself securely on before you screw it in, as well as this little fan filter that goes across the entire top right in this gap here. And if we remove it, we'll see that it's magnetic, just like all the others. I'm not sure if I said that yet, but they are magnetic fan filters. This one's fairly clean. As I said, used case, you never know, right? But once that's popped off, and he did have fans here, you can see. Once that's popped off, it reveals your fan rails where you can put, I believe, a 120, well, obviously, all the way up to 360 or even a 280 millimeter radiator with fans in here as it does have support for two 140 millimeter fan on top. 
So looking at the accessories pack for the 011 Dynamic, not sure, as I said, it's used. You can see it's been opened. Not sure if this is going to be everything that comes with it, but this is everything I got, so let's open it up and check it out. So looking inside, can't really see much. Let me just slide some stuff out here. <clears throat> okay, there's that secondary bracket right there for the SSD sled that would go on the bottom. But as I said, I've chosen to install more fans there, so this doesn't actually have any room now. <clears throat> then what looks to be just your little accessories pack for your hard drive screws, power supply screws, motherboard screws. Alright, as I said, standoffs are already in the case, but oh, there's one there, so there is a couple extra standoffs in here too. That's pretty good. Take out this right here, this seems to be... oh, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe it'll show us in the manual, which is right here. This here is the manual for the Lian Li 011 Dynamic. Okay, so quickly looking at the manual for the Lian Li 011 Dynamic and installation guide, I would guess. <laughs> but you know, the case components on the first page here, everything labeled very nicely, it's black and white manual, it's all right though. Then you have the hardware list, so everything that should come with it. Oh, rubber pad for PSU mounting. Oh, okay, so if you're gonna install two PSUs, it goes between them. Okay, that makes sense. Um. All right, extra standoffs, three pieces. Okay, yeah, so that would make sense. Must mean that the standoffs already came pre-installed. Now we know. And your power supply screws, hard drive screws, and more hard drive screws. Oh, SS, two and a half inch screws and three and a half inch screws. Then lets you know how to remove the top panel, PSU installation, motherboard installation, hard drive, more hard drives. More hard drives, as you can fit a ton of drives in this. Then you have your clearances here for your uh, CPU cooler, your GPU. Um, how far between, I guess, I don't know, RAD support, power supply. So it gives you lots of information. Hopefully, if you hadn't already picked parts that weren't too big for those areas, but at least it gives you it. And here it's got your radiator and cooling support letting you know what sizes can go where. And then option kits if you want to add any accessories to this case like uh, USB 3. Oh no, I think it already has that. That's just telling you where they would go. Um, option kits, package content. So I think that's your vertical GPU. I have a cable mod one personally. Some, so that's upright display card kit. How to install it. Alright. And that's it for the manual. But I think, yep, that's it for the accessories that I got <clears throat> with the Lian Li 011 Dynamic. And I think that's about it for this video. So, if you're interested in learning more or possibly picking up a Lian Li 011 Dynamic for yourself, I'll have some links posted in the description below where you can do just that. And if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and possibly subscribe. I'm Andrew, and this was Tech Check.